Best way to test your turbo under load. You're dragging. You're dragging it. Well, that's cool. <laughs> Well, it makes real nice wishy noises. Yeah. Uh, well, we have a Barbie car that we both agree is a little too slow. And we have some boxes. We have a box of very exciting stuff. And one of them says turbo, turbo charger on it. <laughs> So it's gonna be a good day. Yeah, it's gonna be a very good day. Uh, first off, we've got our oil cooler, which I got excited about and already took out of the box um, so that we can cool down the oil for the turbo. We've got a little electric fuel pump so that we can have enough fuel because we're already having fuel starvation problems and we're gonna be sucking down more fuel now. Um, and I think we're going to get a second one of these to pump oil around. If it works, we'll test it first and see if it'll pump oil. Because for the turbo, we need an oil supply, but to tap into the engine on there would be difficult and potentially cause problems. So we're just going to run an entirely separate oil system for the turbo um, and just have a little pump, a cooler, and then a reservoir so that we can just run oil through the turbo specifically. Um, and that way it won't heat up the engine extra or burn up the engine oil or it'll just be better for everything. The tiniest tur turbo I've ever seen. <laughs> that thing is ridiculous. Isn't it beautiful? And there's two ways to turbocharge a carbureted engine and there's draw through and blow through. Um, and from my minimal research on the internet, I think that for our application draw through is going to be simpler. But if that doesn't work, we'll try something else. So that means that the turbo is gonna be, bef I mean, the carburetor is gonna be before the turbo. So the carburetor, instead of being here, will stick out the side of the turbo here. So it'll suck air through the carburetor just like it's meant to work in the first place. Um, and then that pressurized air fuel mixture will just go straight into the engine. Yeah, then it's time to start taking stuff apart. Sweet. So far, as we dig deeper, we're finding more problems, which is good because the engine wasn't running right to start with. We got to get it in tip top shape before boosting it. Yeah, so we pulled the carburetor off and I noticed all this black crud in here on the, in the intake, which leads me to believe that we're getting some blow by on the intake valve. It's not closing all the way. So when the compression happens or combustion happens, some of it goes back out there and so I took off the valve adjuster cap and it's the valve has absolutely no play in it so it's probably that's probably the case there we go Ethan's hitting up some custom plates and by now I'm really wondering how many hours we have invested into the Barbie car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you add up the time we have building it versus the time we have riding it, it's probably about 400 to one. Yeah, definitely, if that. <laughs> that didn't work. I've been building lots and lots of flanges. So we've got a flange for the uh, intake on the turbo, for the outlet, for the exhaust inlet. Yeah, so the, that flange is removable. I'll just tack it in place so that it's the right angle and then take it off and weld it. Mm. Like that. Spaces it out so that you can adapt from that bolt pattern to this bolt pattern. And then that way we can reuse the same uh, boot thing to hold the carburetor on, which will allow it a little bit of movement. Every time I think this thing can't get any crazier. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's incredibly absurd. <laughs> Did you 
hear that? That was the sound of a turbo spooling down on a Barbie car! <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Yes. We are going to call it a night, get started early in the morning, and get some oil lines in this bad boy. Because right now, uh, I'm a bad combination of tired and really excited. <laughs> so starting in on the new project of running oil lines and making all of that work would be a bad thing right now. It's probably just like, ah, close enough! Close enough, Except let's run it. <laughs> and flanges and stuff. I've got the uh, oil uh, oil return line, which conveniently I just stole this off of another turbo that I had laying around <laughs> and uh, just widened out the bolt holes and it fit. And then I made a little block off plate for the water jacket just to keep stuff from getting in there. It's time to test if our fuel pump will pump oil. Well, so much for that idea. <laughs> it's worth a shot. It was a cool idea. Yeah, it just seems so overkill, but it's the smallest one we could find, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I found some smaller ones later, but they were like $200 and stuff. So. No way. That sucks. This thing's just gonna blast it. <laughs> yeah, it flows 3.2 gallons a minute. Well, that one works. Kinda. Is that still not as much flow as you'd want? I mean, it should be enough. It's just surprisingly pathetic for a six and a half amp pump. <laughs> Can't believe you found room for yeah. such a big pump in such a small car. I'm kind of amazed myself. got back from a run to town, which for us takes us a half an hour either way, and struck out hard. So it looks like Ethan's gonna be making a lot of parts from scratch. I already drilled the hole into the end of this bolt. So now I just gotta drill a hole through the side of it. And we'll have ourselves a banjo bolt. Why it's called a banjo? No freaking clue. Yeah, I like that color of that flat black more than I thought I would. Yeah. It's pretty fresh. So, well, that's a bit more durable than yeah. the uh, the mat we used for this too. Probably, it's tractor paint. Yeah, tractor paint for life. I think I'll turn it around like this. Cause that's where the oil pump is, but then I'll just cut a hole through there for this one. So fresh. And it can go back to the pump, and then we can have it sit something like that. Oil cooler on the Barbie Stang. Finished welding up the uh, oil tank oil reservoir and I've got some I was gonna buy some fittings for this but I couldn't find anything that was even vaguely useful so I just made them um, stole some fittings off of an old turbo I know it's not running right yet but it looks absolutely insane yeah, it's still got plenty of problems, but, uh, well, mainly being that the, the oil pump uh, will only run for like two seconds at a time, and then it, I don't know, overheat not overheats, but decides it's too much pressure or whatever, and shuts off, so that's dumb, but, um, and we may still be running out of fuel, which is easy to solve because we have a fuel pump, but I kind of just want to see what it does under load, because just revving it freely isn't a very good example of how it runs, so. Here it goes. Here it goes. Well, it makes real nice wishy noises. Yeah. It's impossible to tell in this type of a space whether it has more power, but it kind of felt like it. <laughs> Conclusion is it's not getting enough fuel, so we are going to need to install that fuel pump. Seems that way and figure out the oil cooler solution as well. But 
besides that, it looks awesome, sounds awesome, certainly headed in the right direction. The tire's done. So in our first video chat, you guys wanted us to do a backflip, and uh, the time is now. We said we'd put it in our next video. This is a classic fire season, North Idaho sunset. It's kind of high, it kind of scares me every time. 